So let's use the Cilium CLI for monitoring and troubleshooting our environment. So this is the CLI that you'd install on your own desktop and use it to connect remotely to your platform. It's not the Cilium CLI that's installed inside of the Cilium agent pods, which is used typically for more advanced use cases. And you can check out some of the other videos on our Isovalent YouTube channel that we've done to cover that. So let's have a quick look at which uh, arguments we've got available for us today using the Cilium CLI. So we're going to look at things like seeing the Cilium configuration of our platform, gives the ability to view, change and unset any values in place. Uh, we're going to have a look at the connectivity test that we can run as well to validate our Cilium platform is installed and configured as we expect. Uh, we'll have a look at things like Cilium status and also system as well, which pulls a lot of information for our platform and we can configure that information that's available. Uh, and that's really good if you need to open a GitHub issue, for example, uh, on the Cilium repo um, as part of the open source project, or of course, if you are using uh, Isovalent Enterprise for Cilium and need to get in touch with uh, Isovalence Enterprise Support Desk with an issue that you may have as well. So let's dive into that. Um, one of the things I'm going to show you quickly is actually we do have the ability to do some basic uh, troubleshooting with uh, Cilium uh, BGP using the CLI command. There's more inside of that in guest agent inside of the pod as well. Um, I don't have BGP set up inside of my environment, but essentially you've got the ability there to see the peering state to make sure that your Cilium nodes appeared to the wider BGP network as well. And then you can debug things like timers and, and connectivity requests and so forth inside of each individual agent node. Okay, so I've got Cilium installed inside of my platform. So let's use the status command to validate all of that. So this will check to ensure that all of our pods are up and running as we expect. So I can see that Cilium's working, the operator's working. I've actually deployed Envoy as a separate daemon set inside of my environment, which means that when I upgrade Cilium, if there are no updates to Envoy, for example, um, I'm not disrupting any traffic that's proxied through that Envoy uh, data plane as well, which is really fantastic. We've got Hubble Relay set up. Uh, we're not doing cluster mesh, we've only got a single cluster today. We've also got things like Hubble UI deployed um, and moving down as well, we can see the Helm chart version that's been used. So I'm currently, I think, on the latest that's available. We've got the Cilium uh, image versions that I'm using as well. So I'm just using all of the publicly available uh, images. I'm not using um, uh, I'm not using like any of the CI uh, testing images, for example, or have any hot fixes inside of my environment as well. So I'm going to clear that down. And then the next command that we're going to look at from the list um, is around that configuration as well. So if I do Cilium config, um, you can see we've got the ability to view all of our configuration. We can also set new configurations inside our environment. If we use the Cilium CLI to do that, it will restart the Cilium agent pods for us automatically. Um, and we can also delete any keys and value pairs inside of there as well. And again, that'll cause us to restart those pods. So let's have a quick look at our Cilium configuration. So this is everything which would be kept inside of the config map that exists inside of the namespace where Cilium is installed. And that config map is called Cilium-config. And we can have a quick look at that as well, just so you can uh, correlate the two together. And we see here that debug, for example, is disabled. So we're actually going to enable that using the command as well. Because again, we're thinking about troubleshooting going forward. So we're going to do Cilium config set, and then it will be uh, debug, and it will be true. And we can see there that we've now patched the config map and that we've restarted the Cilium pods. And if we just view, and I'm just going to uh, grep for the word debug. So we've got a smaller output this time. You can see now that it sets true. If I do kubectl get config map in the namespace of cube system and we're looking for Cilium config and we output that to YAML. Again, we're going to see all the same information that's inside of there. It just makes it really nice and easy to configure it using that CLI tool. And if I scroll up enough, we can all see that it's set there as debug true. So we're just synchronizing those two things together in our minds of how that Cilium CLI is working. Okay, so the next Cilium command is looking at the connectivity. So this is where we can run connectivity tests. 
So if I do uh, connectivity space test here, we can now see that there are a number of uh, configuration items for this. And actually it's very in depth. We can configure the images that are used inside of the tests for the pods that it spins up, the namespace that it's in. Um, do we want to print all flows into our terminal? Um, do we only want to um, you know, run certain tests inside of our environment? Do we want to ensure maximum number of retries of those tests? Um, do we want to skip any tests as well? Um, and for example, where do we want to run these tests inside of our environment? Because they take up resources to do that, because again, it's going to deploy a number of pods inside of a namespace to do all of that. Um, so let's see what we have. Um, so let's run uh, just a particular one test. So we're going to do hyphen test, and then we're just going to do pod to cider. Now, I've never actually run the Cilium Connectivity Tests in this brand new Cilium environment I've run. Uh, I've spun up using Talos. So we'll see what happens inside of here as well. Now, Talos actually um, does deploy some advanced security permissions out of the box that I've not disabled. So some of these tests, again, may fail straight away because of the Talos environment, the way it's set up. So the way that we'd fix that is we could deploy a namespace. Automatically, we can... Um, uh, configure that with the right security permissions and we can tell the Selenium test to actually use that as well. So we can see here that we've got some failures because those pods won't run, but let's have a look at how we would fix that. Uh, so let's grab the help. And then if I do namespace, we can see here that we could send it to a particular namespace to perform the connectivity test in as well. With the test namespace and at the bottom there, we've got the namespace to say where Selenium is actually running if we've had to install it in a different namespace other than Cube system, for example. Um, so we're going to move on from there. And the last one that I want to call out here is the ability to do uh, create the system file. So I'm going to do Cilium system with a H on it. And again, we can see a number of uh, configuration arguments for that as well. So we've got the Cilium uh, debug tool flags. We've got the namespace that are available in which operators we want to pull from. Because again, maybe we were doing some sort of testing there as well. Very useful if you are helping to contribute to the Cilium uh, uh, project. And we can change the number of um, Hubble flows that are captured as part of that. And for example, we've even got the ability just to do a quick capture as well. And then finally, we can also um, configure the output name that's available. And we also have a little variable there to ensure that we've got the timestamp added so you understand where that file comes from. So I'm just going to run this as the last command for this video. So we're going to do Cilium system hyphen hyphen quick hyphen hyphen output hyphen file name vEducate because we're from vEducate.co.uk is my platform um, hyphen Cilium and then hyphen that timestamp uh, little argument there as well uh, and then that should work for us Ah, okay so the reason why this doesn't work so what we need to do there in that file name is because it's been escaped is i just need to use the quotation marks and we can see now it's going to go on and collect all of those for us inside our environment and because we're using uh, the quick uh, one it only takes a couple of seconds and then there's a number of uh, collections that may or may not fail depending on the configuration environment here so straight away i can see here we're not getting things like gateway class because we've not got the gateway api service set up inside of this environment that's a really quick overview of using the client cli from your local machine to help you get started in understanding the health of your Cilium platform and then start to uh, monitor and do some basic troubleshooting as well for those advanced troubleshooting use cases that's where you're going to be using the Cilium hyphen dgp command uh, which stands for debug and that's inside of the Cilium agents themselves and we'll have some more advanced videos on our youtube channel for you for those use cases thank you very much to learn more about both the Cilium CLI and the Cilium agent CLI why not download our Cilium cheat sheet from isovalent.com as you can see, it's very in-depth. It's been put together by one of our own in-house designers at Isovalent and looks absolutely gorgeous. 
And you can see we've got things like how to upgrade Cilium, how to configure uh, Cilium config maps. Um, if we go more over to the right hand side, then we start to use those um, commands inside the Cilium agent itself. So things like the Cilium DGP policy, so we can view those and see how they've been applied inside of our environment from a debugging point of view. We can look at uh, FQDN caches for if we're using the layer seven proxies, for example. Um, lots of really great information in there and hopefully make your life a lot easier when using the Cilium platform as well. So head on over to isavalent.com or find the short link below. Thank you very much.